Okay. In the latest attempt to rid the Knicks of one Julius Randall, here is my latest proposal. Today, I found another sucker, I mean team, <laughs> that might be willing to take him off of our hands and he might fit there. That would be the Minnesota Timberwolves. Let's talk about the Timberwolves. So the Timberwolves in 2020-2021 have, um, well, they have 21 million in cap space, right? But that 21 million goes away if James Johnson uh, exercises his 16 million dollar option, which I fully expect him to do. I fully expect him to exercise that option. I mean, players are going to take the bag. Johnson's at the end of his career. And this is the last year of that option. So I expect him to take that option and, uh, yeah, take that money to the bank. So Minnesota, I mean, and not only that, there's some rumors that, uh, James Johnson is not, uh, Minnesota and James Johnson are not happy with each other. So, that being the case, I'm thinking we trade Julius Randle for James Johnson. And, and I don't think we need to do any picks in this. I think this would be something that's straight up uh, Julius Randle for James Johnson. Um, they, they, his contract is $16 million. Julius is just a slightly under $19 million. And so that's close enough to make the trade work. If they need to throw in another player, I mean, they have other players they can throw in there. Um, you know, who is it? Let's think of Jacob something. Some, they got somebody, Layman or somebody. They can throw somebody in there. But James Johnson is 33. So we won't have any problem having him on our roster for one year, right? That's all we're dealing with him. And he's going to be a bench piece for one year, okay? Which is what we want Julius Randle to be anyway. But in Minnesota... So, you know, Minnesota has starts Carl Anthony Towns at the five. They're going to start, obviously, D'Angelo Russell at the one. They also are going to probably draft uh, Anthony Edwards. But even if they don't, I mean, I can't see him drafting LaMelo Ball unless they're going to trade him. Uh, it's a pretty no-brainer pick to pick Anthony Edwards at the top of the at the top of the draft. So he's going to be slotted in as the starting two guard. So, you know, he's got to get his touches. OK, he, he's a number one pick. In fact, they will have a trio of number one picks. And so Julius Randle will be the fourth option on that team. And rightly so, because D'Angelo Russell is an offensive threat. Carl Anthony Towns is definitely offensive threat. And then you have uh, Anthony Edwards, which would leave Mr. Randle with, you know, one-on-one -on -one coverage a lot of time. You know, so he would be effective, I think, in that scenario. There's no defense to speak of. But when you look at the Minnesota Timberwolves for like ever since they got Carl Anthony Towns, there hasn't been any defense to speak of. The only time they had any semblance of defense is when our new coach, Tom Thibodeau, coached them, and they whined and complained about that. Okay, and uh, and so uh, and and they had some good defensive players that Tibbs brought in, but they shipped most of them out. Covington was the best defender they had, and now he's playing very well for Houston. So uh, I don't think Minnesota's concerned with defense too much at this point. So. They could. We could get Randall over there. We don't have to do any draft picks. Um, and, and if they wanted to include another player, like a Jacob Evans or somebody, um, or Mari Spellman, I don't think they include him because he's, he's actually pretty good. They probably want to keep him. But, you know, if they want to include another player to make the money closer, fine. But I'm thinking we could just do 16 million, James Johnson. Randall goes over there for, for 18 point something million, 19 million. Uh, and he starts at the four and, James Johnson comes off the bench for us. He comes something like a Taj Gibson for us. Okay. And, um, we move on because at that, in that particular deal, if it's one, if it's one to one, actually we pick up two million dollars in, in cash, two additional million dollars in cash space. So we really will have money to do a lot. And as I mentioned in another video, um, we have options. So if we want, if we really like the guy, so we talked about this in the other video in terms of the uh, free agency options that the Knicks have. If they wanted to throw a lot of money, let's say they wanted to throw a lot of money at Danilo Gallinari, a one-year, $20 million, $21 million deal, right? Um, or two-year, $40 million with the second year as an option. 
We can afford to do that and have money left over. Uh, we can afford to outbid the Nets for Joe Harris. Um, Davis Bertans, if he still wanted him. Now, I've been doing some more research into Bertans. Didn't realize that he had two ACL surgeries. He had two ACL surgeries, which is why he's a little stiff on the defensive end. Um, he's still a lights out shooter. I mean, that guy is lights out. He's probably the best shooter in this free agent class and definitely one of the best three point shooters in the NBA. Most of his shots are three point shots and he shoots more than 40, 42% from three. Uh, he does more three point shots than he does two point shots. And so he's a deadly shooter. So, uh, you know, if the Knicks are into that, that he's a, you know, we could probably outbid Washington to get him. Um, we have to be in a bidding war though with Atlanta and, and the Suns who both want him on their team. And I don't want to get in a bidding war when there's so many guys available. Uh, when you're talking, let's take batons off the table. You still got Mook. You still got Jeremy Grant. You still got Danilo Gallinari. All these guys are available at the stretch four. See, so, uh, Mook plays three and four. Okay. So you still got all these guys available and you don't have to outbid anybody for them. I don't think, I, uh, Grant's got a nine million dollar option. If you offered him 14, he'd probably take that. Okay. Um, Mook will probably take the same 15 that he took before two years, 15 million. Nobody else is going to give him that. So we got options. Okay. And we still got options on the wing with Joe Harris, uh, Bogdanovich, um, uh, Malik Beasley, uh, Duncan Robinson. And you know where else I discovered today? I was looking at Miami's roster. Uh, Kendrick Nunn, who you guys know, he's been playing his butt off of Miami, come out of nowhere, like undrafted, uh, from college in Oakland. He's going to be a free agent. So Miami's got to sign him and Duncan Robinson, which I think they could do. Um, so I'm not, I mean, they got, uh, they're going to have 29 million in cash space. I don't think either of those guys are going to cost them more than 12 a piece. It probably not even that. So, um, you're probably going to keep them, but hey, it's worth a look, right? But this is an opportunity for us because I am, I don't know about you guys, but as a Knicks fan, I'm desperate to get rid of Julius Randle. I hope the Knicks do not keep him. If we could get rid of him, I'm very happy. And this can be a draft night deal um, involving no picks. They wanted something. Maybe we throw in a second rounder, right? Because, you know, we're gaining on the cap space. Maybe we throw in a second rounder because they just gave up. They're stupid, though. They gave up their first-round pick for next year. Top three protected, but they gave up their first-round pick to get um, D'Angelo Russell. And they gave Golden State Warriors their first-rounder and their second-rounder. So I wouldn't give them no first-rounders for sure, but maybe throw in a second-rounder if that gets this cat out of here. And then, um, you know, now we have, we don't have to worry about him, and we can start looking for a real stretch for what do you guys think? I think this might, this is something that might work if Minnesota is interested. Shalom.